Hello, everyone. So it was the best of time. It was the worst of times. Today, we are going to tell a tale of the two computation engines. Um, I'm Wenlei, uh, a research scientist working in data platforms um, in Facebook. And uh, today, Andrew will, uh, and I will um, present uh, about Press on Spark. And uh, Andrew is also working in Facebook data platform as a software engineer. I will, uh, I will talk about the introduction and uh, what motivates us to do this press on Spark. And Andrew will follow up with the design and implementation and our current set. Okay, let's start with the introduction part. So uh, let's start with the CQ use case at Facebook. Um, roughly speaking, there are three CQ use cases. The first is the so-called reporting and the dashboarding. This includes, you know, serving custom reporting for both internal and external developers for business insights. And also in Facebook, a lot of, a lot of those A-B test infrastructure is also built on Presto. The characteristics of this use case is low latency. So think about it, it requires tens to hundreds of milliseconds with very high QPS requirement. And uh, not surprisingly, this category is almost exclusively using Presto since Presto is designed for that. The second use case is ad hoc analysis. Uh, this is an interesting use case as Facebook internal users, such as you know, data scientists, business analytics, uh, they want to perform complex ad hoc analysis to understand, uh, for example, usage trend and uh, how to improve the product. Usually this means moderate latency. So thinking about uh, seconds to minutes because the query is crafted ad hoc, so you cannot uh, expect uh, milliseconds later. And the QPS is quite low because users have to type those queries. An interesting, an interesting uh, note is uh, users usually craft the query and iterate uh, over those results. So users is kind of waiting. And uh, this category mainly use Presto, but uh, we also use uh, Spark CQ uh, occasionally. The final use case, uh, which we call the batch pipelines. Essentially, uh, those are scheduled jobs that are running every day uh, or hour when the, whenever the data is ready. This often contains queries over very large volume of data. And the latency can be up to tens of hours, uh, thinking about the largest pipelines running on Spark today in Facebook. For this use case, uh, both Presto and Spark are used. And uh, generally, we find the Presto are more welcome for small batch jobs, say, you know, last for a few hours, and the uh, Spark becomes dominator for those large batch jobs. So as we discussed before, um, for reporting, dashboard, and uh, ad hoc analysis, we mainly use Presto, while for batch jobs, we use a mix of Presto and Spark. And this is mainly due to Presto doesn't scale for large batch pipelines at Facebook. Usually such pipelines needs to run many hours or doing join or aggregation of a huge amount of data. This is definitely not ideal um, because it causes inconsistent CQ experience. Um, first of all, you know, we all know the two CQ engines have slightly different CQ dialects. Um, another thing we find is about the subtle semantic difference. For example, uh, although both Presto CQ and the Spark CQ follows NCCQ, uh, NCCQ spec uh, just say, uh, in some case, NCCQ spec says, it's up to the uh, vendor engine to decide whether to return no or through exception. Other cases including, you know, uh, structural, uh, structural data behavior such as array. Uh, you probably, for, for companies running multiple CQ engines, probably the user-defined function difference is also a well-known problem. <laughs> Finally, we have also seen uh, users develop a different best practice when writing uh, CQs on different engines, such as query hint or join ordering. So this really poses a pain point for users. So for example, a uh, user might want to test their query in ad hoc mode, use Presto, and then later they have to convert it to use Spark when they really uh, you know, run a batch pipeline in production. And also someday user might want to say, hey, this is a dashboard query is running very well for, for many months, but we want to run uh, it in batch as well over a larger volume. And in such case, users often need have to 
translate their query between the two CQ engines, um, which is a huge pain point. So um, now we want to dig a little bit into the presto scalability issues. So let's do a first uh, quick review of Presto and Spark architecture. So as you can see, uh, Presto is designed for low latency and follows this classic MPP architecture. It uses this in-memory streaming shuffle to achieve low latency. And also, uh, we are trying to schedule as much as possible queries uh, on the same Presto worker um, to get a better you know, multi-tenancy. And uh, in, the, uh, in the meanwhile, Spark is designed for scalability from the very beginning. So not surprisingly, it follows the MapReduce architecture. The shuffle is uh, disaggregated from computation by materializing to disk, as we will discuss later. Also, uh, Spark, uh, uh, Spark maintains an uh, isolated executor for each, for each query, which we have seen for batch jobs, it uh, reduces the operation overhead. So, uh, okay, let's go to this question about why Presto or other MPP database doesn't scale. Uh, this has been an open discussion for decades and still get asked in our recent paper in VLB to, VLDB 2009. Uh, which compare the MapReduce style data processing systems and the traditional parallel database. So to this end, let's examine a very simple aggregation queries. Um, so essentially this query, um, this query you know, uh, goes over the orders table in TPCH and uh, doing aggregation of custom key computes the total price, the sum of total price. And uh, as we said, uh, uh, Presto leverages this in-memory shuffle. And uh, so to execute it, uh, we, Presto will do a shuffle on the custom key uh, after reading the data and doing the aggregation for the same key uh, on each worker. So uh, doing in-memory shuffle means <clears throat> senders will write to the in-memory output buffer and wait for the data being fetched by receiver. As a result, uh, we have to execute all the tasks tasks uh, before and after the exchange at the same time. So thinking about in the map reduce world, all the mappers and the reducers has to be run concurrently. This makes memory shuffle an all or nothing execution model. So for example, so, so uh, for example, uh, this causes inflexible scheduling and uh, for tolerance becomes more difficult uh, because everything is running concurrently. And, uh, also, uh, in the aggregation phase, uh, it might exceed the memory limit because everything has to be held in the main memory. So uh, this motivates the press unlimited work. The, the high level idea here is to bring this MapReduce style disaggregated shuffle to an MPP runtime. And we did this by adding a materialization step right of the, after the shuffle. So as you can see, this intermediate shuffle data is now returned to disk. And uh, in Presto, this is modeled as a temporary partition in the table. This indeed bring more flexible uh, execution after shuffle. So thinking it as in the reducer phase, we can now have better scalability because we can do partition level retry. We can schedule only a few reducers at the same time to reduce the uh, uh, peak memory limitation, uh, sorry, peak memory consumption. So what's the key here? Uh, the shuffle is now disaggregated from computation on the reducer side. Unfortunately, not on the mapper side. So we improve the scalability, but the mapper is still doesn't scale well. So, fi so finally, that's why press on Spark comes. Um, essentially, we try to execute uh, press evaluation library on Spark runtime, as Andrew will uh, talk about the details in the rest part. So with Spark being used as a runtime. Now we can do a full, fully disaggregated shuffle um, on custom key for both mapper and the reducer side. And uh, this means all mappers and the reducers can be independently scheduled and uh, can be independently retriable. We also bring other good things uh, from Spark, including spectral executing and uh, better uh, resource management. So uh, finally, one question we often get asked is uh, why we want to do press on Spark 
instead of making Pareto unlimited more scalable. So to answer that, that let's recall what is missing for Pareto unlimited to truly scalable. So first, uh, we need a fully disaggregated shuffle. And uh, we also find um, we, when fully disaggregated shuffle is done, uh, isolated executor and other uh, interesting features such as um, such as speculative execution and uh, scheduler tailored for a batch, uh, batch jobs are also required. So note that those actually lays down a foundation for general purpose parallel data processing systems such as Spark or Tay. Such data processing system has its own usage and the well-defined program abstraction. So instead of embedding such a uh, mini Spark runtime in, inside the Presto, we believe we should really leverage existing well-developed systems to, to scale large batch jobs. Uh, for example, Spark, which is the most successful parallel data processing system in the big data ecosystem. We also believe such collaboration between uh, the Presto and Spark would help the, in general, the whole big data community to better understanding the abstraction between CQ engines and the general data parallel systems, uh, as well as involve and uh, refine the execution primitives. So with this, I will now uh, hand over to Andre to talk about the actual design and implementation. In the second uh, part of this presentation, I would like to discuss some key uh, design principles and also dive into more uh, details around implementation of uh, Preston Spark. The key design principle in Preston Spark uh, is that Presto code is run as a library in Spark environment. So the classic Presto cluster is not actually needed to run uh, queries with Preston Spark. Uh, from the Spark point of view, Preston Spark is just a custom batch application. Uh, Presto query is passed as a parameter. Uh, to that application. And uh, another key uh, design detail is that Preston Spark is implemented with RDDs and it doesn't use data frame API. And uh, all the operation done by Preston code is completely packed to the Spark engine. So Preston Spark doesn't use the distributed file system client provided by Spark. It doesn't use any file format decoder and coders. Uh, all of that is provided by, uh, by this Presto library. So on the right side, there is an example of Spark submit command that is used to run Preston Spark. So it basically takes the artifacts, uh, it takes package, uh, it takes configuration and a query as, as a parameter. So no conventional Presto cluster is involved. We start, uh, the execution is started by running the Presto code on Spark driver to, to pre-process the Presto query. Uh, so first uh, we run Presto parser and optimizer to generate logical plan. As you can see for this simple joint query, we have a pretty, pretty simple logical plan. That's basically a scan of two tables, applying filter and joining them together. And uh, then based on the logical plan, we run press the distributed planner to generate distributed plan. And uh, the distributed plan is the same for both Presto, Preston Spark and Classic Preston. Uh, in the future, we may also add some additional stage, uh, an adaptation stage that basically uh, does some transformation uh, for the Presto plan to make it more uh, to make it better and more optimal uh, for a Preston Spark model of execution. The next step is uh, the translation of Presto distributed plan into a Spark uh, RDD. So the first step in this translation process is uh, a split enumeration. So we enumerate all the splits in advance. And then we create parallel RDDs by calling uh, Spark context parallelize. Uh, then uh, we map uh, the splits in, in, into a list of pairs by applying Presto evaluation as an APAC mapper. So basically, each output pair contains a partition ID as a key and the row as its value. 
and uh, then we run uh, then we repartition the output by the key with applying partition by function. And finally, we zip partition together and run presto evaluation to actually perform, to actually join two tables together. For joins with more than two inputs, we have a custom RDD that is based on zip RDD. A custom RDD allows to zip arbitrary number of inputs, like for n-way joins or for unions or for, for this type of operations. Uh, this slide, you can see uh, and uh, the generated uh, Spark uh, DAG based on uh, the Presto distributed plan. Uh, so it has stage, it has three stages, stage zero and stage one, they run mapper operations on the input tables. And then basically stage two runs the joint operation. To create a processor function, we serialize and send a plan for a specific fragment to an executor. And then based on uh, the plan fragment, we create a local execution plan that is uh, used to create a processor function. So the processor interface is very simple. So in case of a leaf fragment, the process, uh, processor takes a set of splits and produces a set of rows. For an intermediate fragment, the processor takes a list of inputs containing rows from uh, upstream stages and produces a set of rows as an output. It is important to mention that Presto evaluation engine is columnar based. So Presto operates on columnar data structure called page. And as part of this project, we had to develop a row based representation for Presto data. It is needed uh, to uh, be able to use Spark shuffle and that is by uh, itself fundamentally role based operation. Uh, so before the data is supplied to Spark, it is converted from uh, columnar pages to, uh, to role based representation. Uh, it is also important to understand the efficiency implication of this conversion. So in conventional press, the, a page has to be serialized to something we call serialized page. So it can be sent over the wire to a downstream stage. Uh, in Presto on Spark, we uh, replace the serialization with directly translating page into a list of serialized rows. Uh, based on that, we don't expect a significant uh, efficiency loss caused by this conversion. Another interesting query shape uh, is uh, the broadcast join. Uh, so, in case of a broadcast join, uh, the distributed plan has only two fragments. Uh, one fragment scans one of the tables, the other one scans the other table and joins it uh, with, the, with the first table without performing any, any shuffle operations. So, the first table has to be broadcasted to every node that reads the second table. So, how do we translate it to RDD? Uh, so the RDD interface doesn't have a built-in support for broadcasting data uh, in Spark. So for these query shapes, we actually need to create two, uh, two separate RDDs. So first RDD, it scans and filters the orders table, and then the result is collected on a driver and broadcast variable is created containing these uh, the rows from, from the first table. Uh, then uh, the broadcast variable containing this, the result of the first RDD is injected into the fragment that scans uh, line item. So as you can see, there are like two separate jobs that are linked with the, with the broadcast variable. Uh, at this slide, we can see uh, how does uh, the first and second job look like? So basically these two jobs are just a simple uh, map, uh, simple map operations. And the connection between them is basically a broadcast variable that is actually not visible on, uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this page. Uh, so the execution of uh, broadcast join is 
is very similar. So the broadcast fragment executor API looks exactly the same as the leaf executor API for partition join. However, the joint fragment executor now accepts a broadcast variable containing the data for the first table. Uh, so a couple of words about uh, Spark execution model versus Preston Spark execution model. So on Spark, the thread management is done by Spark executor. So Spark executor runs multiple tasks, uh, one thread per task. Each task accepts a single partition produced by a shuffle. Uh, so the shuffle has to produce one partition per thread. With Preston Spark, we always run a single Spark task per executor. The thread management is done by Preston Spark itself. So a single Preston Spark task accepts a single partition. Then it does another level of local in memory shuffle to assign subpartition for every thread. And then it runs every subpartition in parallel using uh, the thread pool managed by Preston Spark internally. Uh, so with this model, it allows us to uh, reduce load on the shuffle service, as now it has to produce only a single partition per executor, which is uh, one partition per thread. Uh, also, it allows us to save memory of broadcast join, as the internal hash table representation for broadcasted tables uh, can be shared by all the threads uh, within a single Preston Spark uh, task. Uh, another, in, another interesting problem that we encountered is dependency management. When we first tried to run Preston Spark, we saw a lot of incompatible dependency clashes. Uh, basically, at some point, we realized that reshading our dependencies doesn't really scale and it is not sustainable long term. The dependencies tend to change from uh, one version to another, and it's very difficult to keep track of these changes to support forward and backward compatibilities between different versions of Preston Spark and Spark. So instead of trying to uh, relocate uh, classes within uh, independencies, uh, we decided to simply run Presta code in the isolated class loader. So, uh, Preston Spark, with Preston Spark, we actually create two artifacts. One artifact is the launcher, and the other artifact is the Preston Spark package. So we uh, start uh, Preston Spark with the launcher, and then we pass the package as a parameter uh, to the launcher. Then launcher knows how to extract uh, this package and how to bootstrap a Presto class loader and all the Presto services based on uh, this package. Uh, so the Presto itself also uses class loaders to run plugins. So plugins are also supplied in the Preston Spark package along with the main code, uh, with the main Presto code. Uh, ideally, the Spark engine should provide this class loader isolation by default internally, uh, running all user code in a separate class loader. Uh, so this isolation might be generally useful for custom uh, Spark application, and maybe at some point we would even want to contribute this class loader isolation to the open source uh, Spark. A couple of words about current status of the project. So the project is still under very active development of GitHub. Uh, most of the query shapes are supported. We are still working on supporting uh, some uh, flavors of Union. And we're also going to invest some time in making this future being publicly available. We're going to work on documenting it so everybody knows how to write, run it. Uh, we also conducted some initial scalability tests. So we were managed to scale uh, Presto on Spark to be run on 10,000 mappers and 10,000 reducers. So it is almost 10x uh, the size of our existing uh, Presto clusters. Uh, we uh, also uh, were able to run queries that would otherwise require more than 50 terabytes uh, distributed memory when run in classic Presto. And we've seen, uh, because we can uh, run the query with much higher parallelism, we've seen a very nice wall time reduction for large batch queries. 
So the query that takes more than six hours in Presto will manage to run in under two hours uh, with uh, Presto and Spark. Uh, that's gonna be it from us. Thank you for uh, joining our presentation. And now we're gonna have some time for Q&A.